Hey friends, it's Laura with Laura B. Floss Tube. Welcome and welcome back. I'm so glad you joined me today. This video has been in the works for a while and I just hadn't put a priority on it and I hadn't really figured out how I was going to pull it off. Um, and I will just preface this by saying that I know that some of you are not going to be down for this. You are not going to like it. And I just want to say that I respect everyone's opinions and I do understand that there are varying thoughts on what I'm about to do. Um, and just um, be kind in the comments, that's what I'll say. I don't need anyone coming at me and being mean and um, telling me that I destroyed something when that's just not how I feel about it. I am repurposing and upcycling and giving some options to make some items and kind of give new life to vintage quilts. So this quilt I showed a while back in my what to do with all this stuff video. It was very popular and I received tons and tons of comments on and suggestions of things to do with the various items. Um, you've seen that I have made a couple quilt tops out of some of those vintage linens and now we are going to tackle one of the quilts. All right, so we have this, um, I think it's a twin size pink and white quilt with embroidered blocks. And in the what to do with this stuff video, I mentioned that I was thinking about cutting this apart and turning it into project bags. Um, and really, if you look at this quilt, the embroidery is in fair condition. I wouldn't say it's in great condition, but it's in fair condition. But the fabric is very worn, very faded. There's some stains around the outside edges, and there's also some um, wearing and definitely some holes in the quilt around. So I have a list of projects that I am going to be making out of this quilt, and a bunch of people will have a piece of this vintage item. So without further ado, I have a little post-it note and I have a little cheat sheet of how I'm going to cut this apart and we're going to get cutting and I'm going to talk through what each of the cuts is going to be made into. All right, so I'm just going to caution you right here. If you're going to have a heart attack when I start cutting this quilt apart, you might want to fast forward. <laughs> but we'll get through it together, I promise. <laughs> The first thing I'm going to do is cut off the side borders and I'm just going to cut them off basically with the same stitching line. Um, I don't necessarily feel like I need to make these perfectly straight because these are going to go into various items. That first cut is going to get you every time, but I promise it's going to be okay. All right, and we're going to move the quilt up and just continue down the side. Just to give you an idea of what I'm going to be doing with these side borders, I am going to be making some makeup brush rolls. Um, I'm also going to be making a heat tool caddy. And I also have some other things in mind. Um, and I am going to do a series of video as I'm working my way through repurposing this quilt. Um, today we are just going to be talking about the projects to come and cutting the quilt up and just seeing how I'm going to um, store those. All right, so here is one of our side borders. Now both of our side borders are going to be used for the same type of projects. So I'm going to get that other border off and then I'll label them both. You have to be brave when you're doing this. You can't be faint of heart, but I promise it is going to be okay. Now I am using my 6 by 24 inch ruler and I have an 18 by 24 inch cutting mat on my table. And again, I'm really just following the sewing line on the quilt itself. Going through all the layers with my brand new rotary blade. Which I may have to switch out again before I do the next project. Oh, there's the Sheba. And like I said, you know, it doesn't have to be necessarily straight at this point. I just want to cut it apart to um, start working with some smaller pieces. All right, so now I have these two side borders cut. Everyone make it so far? I 
know. It's uh, it, it's scary. I get it. All right, and my side borders, like I said, I'm just gonna label them, and that's what those are gonna be labeled as. So, I'm gonna grab this, pin those on there, and put these to the side. All right, next, we're gonna cut off these top and bottom borders. Now, and this is what I was talking about, you guys, look. I mean, this is torn and ripped all the way through. I mean, all the way through the quilt. I can put my finger through the backing, so it is very um, worn. And it's also kind of stained on the ends. Um, that could have come from storing it in a cedar chest. It could have just come from normal wear and tear. Who knows? doesn't really matter because for the projects that I'm doing with these end pieces, I will be able to kind of, um, I guess, fussy cut around those. Let's, and for this end piece, I'm actually going to leave about an inch attached to that center, and I'll explain why in a little bit. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. These end pieces, I'll work my way around the fade and the holes and all of that, and these I'm going to be using to make coasters and Christmas ornaments. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be super fun. I'm going to flip this around to get to the other end. And do the same thing with this other border. And then all the borders will be off the quilt. And we will just have the center to work with. And again, I'm going to leave about an inch attached to that center. And again, I'll explain why when we get to that point. And I'm just using that um, seam line here on the border to figure out where the inch is. I almost made it to the other end with just two rulers, but I didn't. All right, so we're gonna label these and set them to the side. All right, now we're gonna start working with the center. Um, now, the center there are a couple of these blocks that are in really good shape, and there are a couple of these blocks that are not in good shape. And there's also a mark on the quilt here that we wouldn't want to put into a finished project if we could avoid it, at least. All right, so the middle we are going to use to make a few different things. We're going to make some project bags. Um, we're also going to make a table runner. So we want to look around and see which ones are the best. And that's the ones we want to use for the table runner. This one looks pretty good. This one has a stain on it, so that segments out. This one looks pretty good. Okay, so we're going to go, we're going to have a table runner that has embroidered blocks on both ends and then this little um, triangle thing in the, in the middle. Now, the reason I'm not going across the center, which I would agree that this would definitely be a much prettier table runner with just this one block in the middle and then the two um, half star points on either end. But this is stained and this has a mark on it. So either way I would go, I wouldn't be able to get a really nice clean piece. So we're going to go with this top section right here. And for this, we're going to cut right on the seam, or close to it at least. Thankfully, with these embroidered blocks, you have a little leeway um, because there is a lot of white space between here. moving the quilt a little bit so I can get pretty close to being on that seam. Now I'm not worried about squaring this up at this point. I will do that when I'm making the project. Um, at this point I just want to get the quilt cut down to a more manageable size. So this will be our table runner. That's gonna be so cute. And just so you can see how faded this pink fabric is, this was the actual color. So look at the difference there. This quilt is very faded. 
So don't think I'm taking a soft pink quilt and just ripping it apart. Um, this is very faded and very worn. So um, yeah. So here's our table runner. And again, I'm gonna label it, pin it, and put it to the side. Okay, so we are down to three embroidered blocks and three half triangles. Um, and like I said, this triangle section here has a mark on it. And this one is, I don't know if you can tell in the video or not, but it is very stained and um, it also has a stain on it. And this is really kind of stained and has some modeling and marks on it. So those three pieces aren't really something that I want to use in a new project, um, at least not as a whole square. But we are going to do something with those, so stay tuned for that. Um, and then we are going to cut out this embroidered block, and we're going to leave a little bit of space around it on the top and the bottom. And we're going to turn that into a project bag. And I'm leaving two inches on the top and bottom. All right, so we'll put this to the side and label it with project bag on it. I like labeling all these items because that way, because I'm not making everything today. And um, I don't know about you, but I sometimes forget my intent. That doesn't mean I won't necessarily use it for something else. I could, um, but at least I know what I was thinking when I originally cut it out. Now we're gonna flip this one around. There's something lumpy in there. I think it's some quilt batting. We'll have to address that. There's lots of lumpy bits in there. Yeah, can you see that through the backing? I don't know if you'll be able to catch that on camera or not, but there's like a lump right here, and it's just this old batting that has wadded up. So I will need to do something about that too. We don't want a lumpy uh, project bag. Okay, I'm gonna apologize. The neighbors apparently decided this was a perfect time to mow the lawn. this in the project bag pile. And again, it doesn't mean that I necessarily will use it for that, but right now that's how I cut it and that's the intent currently. Sometimes I have um, different ideas uh, when I go to work with a piece and I, d I never want to like, you know, say this is exactly what I'm going to do and I have no flexibility whatsoever. I don't really roll that way. So we have three project bag segments, and we'll put those to the side. Now, obviously, we'll have to match. I'll have to match those up with some other fabrics as well. Okay, so now we have just a few pieces of the quilt, and for these, I'm just going to put those kind of to the side. I'm not positive what I'll use these for. I have a few things in mind. I'm thinking about more um, coasters or ornaments. I'm also thinking about maybe using it somehow um, in a stocking. I think that would be super cute, especially for like a little girl, a little quilted stocking for Christmas time. So we will have to wait and see for, for certain what that turns into, but right now I'm just gonna label these pieces stocking. This is not something everyone's gonna be jumping at the chance to do. And I know it's something that not everyone's gonna agree with. So I do appreciate you watching the video. I do hope you're excited about seeing the upcoming projects that I make with this vintage quilt. And I hope that you can see the intent of repurposing and upcycling and giving new life to vintage linens and quilts. Um, there's definitely a need for that because let's be honest, I have a 
ton of quilts in my house and some of them are in this or worse shape. And so if I have a way that I could repurpose them and then spread the love out between multiple people, that's amazing. So, I mean, there's only one big quilt that someone has made, but if you can think of ideas of being able to divide it up and give pieces of that quilt to several family members or friends, or even if you're just, you found a quilt in a flea market and you're like, you know what, this would be amazing for some different projects. Let's take it and cut it apart and use it. And then several people can benefit from that artwork and, and not have to um, decide how am I going to maintain all of these vintage quilts. Now I would also tell you that I am a quilter and I love the quilts I make but in 50 years or 20 years or even two years if someone sees it and they have it and they don't need it anymore or they find a way to repurpose it I'm totally fine with that because for me I do love making the quilts and it's a craft and an art form that I sincerely love and admire but when I gift a quilt to someone, I do not feel like I have the right to tell them what to do with it. And I definitely don't have the right to tell them to keep it for the rest of their life. Once I've gifted it to them, it is out of my hands and it is for them to have and do whatever they want with. So with that said, if you have constructive criticism or you have a differing, differing opinion, I will most certainly respond and post it. And I appreciate you taking the time to share that information with me. If you have project ideas for other things that I could do with these pieces, I would love to hear those as well. If you have vintage quilts that you plan on doing something similar, I would love to know that. So please leave me a comment below on the video. I look forward to hearing from you. Until next time, I hope you're finding joy in all you do. Find some time to craft and create. And of course, happy stitching.